Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad you're here this morning. Got a big show lined up. Got some special guests here. But first, our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin Highway 77. Run by check out all the programs they have there. High today, 90, low 76. My water temperature is going up to 86 degrees. All right, let's take a look at our river readings. The Appalachian Cold at Blunstown is 2.1, but it's shocked to hatch you. Take a look at the chalk to hatch here. It's going up a little bit. It's reading this morning at a 2.7, but I'm going to be jumping on up there in a day or two, so be ready for that. The tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. Looking on the day, Friday the 21st, we're looking at a little bit of neap tides. Uh, uh, just a little bit of movement here and tomorrow, but next week now we're going to have some really good tides, so be aware of that. Marine forecast west northwest at five to ten. Now we're going to do we're going to do our fishing forecast and our drawing uh, Monday because we have some special guests here in the studio. We'll give them plenty of time, so the drawing and, and the uh, fishing forecast will be on Monday's show. So let's take this break. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back and welcome to our guest from Mexico Beach, Ron Charles. Good morning. Good morning, morning. morning Winston. <coughs> Bob, how you doing? Good morning, doing? Winston. Good to be back. Okay, Bob, Bob and Ron's been on the show a lot uh, before. Uh, this is a big uh, event we have down in Mexico Beach, the an annual Kingfish Tournament. It's our 19th annual Kingfish Tournament. Uh, we've been doing it 19 years, and this is our biggest fundraiser, and uh, we've just been blessed. It's just, uh, we're ready to go. It starts uh, two weeks, actually, uh, yeah, okay. August 28th, 29th. So, so it's, not, it's not this weekend, but it's the following weekend. Right. And uh, we're, we're taking we're thinking serious. The Panhandle fishing team is thinking serious about fishing this thing. Now. <laughs> we uh, we about got beat up in Carabell, but we just about recovered, just to get our strength back. But we're looking for. We've been down there a lot before. You yeah, know? Oh, yeah. And yeah, it's yeah, a sure. great tournament, and uh, we get a lot of folks coming out from Georgia, coming in from uh, from Gulf County and, and Mariana. Mm -hmm. We got some guys from Mariana fishing and. And uh, let's look at, uh, y'all all got everything all ready? We are ready. We've got uh, thousands of dollars worth of door prizes. We have a new Miss Kingfish. Uh, we've got uh, the captain's party is ready to go. We've got sausage coming to cook. We've got uh, uh, door prizes and, 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 and raffle items that you wouldn't even believe. Well, let's we, look at some of these pictures. Talking about door prizes, Ron, right. right here. This one from last year, this $1,000. Gift certificate. What is this right here? Uh, Blue Water Outrigger um, down in Port St. Joe. And Mr. George Duran uh, give us several prizes that we uh, give us that we raffle off. Mm -hmm. And that's a thousand dollar gift certificate from Blue Water Outrigger. All right. And for a ten dollar uh, ticket, you're you're el eligible to win. Now, can anybody come down there and buy those tickets? Just the captain and, and the sponsors. Captain and the sponsors. Right, okay. Right well, that, that's another big reason to buy those things. All right. Here's some pictures from last year. Let's talk about these. Was that the winner? Uh, uh, yeah, that was a winner, I believe, in the uh, pro category, yes. Yeah, we have two categories, you know, the captains and the, and the novices like us, okay? Right, we've got an amateur division and we've got a professional division. We, we separate those That's two. That's a great idea. Great well, idea. you know, we, we, we decided to do that because, you know, I had a lot of people telling us, you know, they play golf, for example, and they can't pick, compete with Tiger Woods. That's right. And they wanted a, they wanted a recreational division and yeah. they wanted a professional division. So we decided to do that. I'm yeah. a strong believer in that. Uh, and 90% of it, it, our uh, tournament entries are... Amateur to yeah, 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 yep. Okay, okay. This picture here, uh, that's some that's some nice king. What was the winning size last year? Uh, let's see, forty-four uh, pounds. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. Pounds. It was about forty-four, 44 pounds. Forty-four pounds. Yeah. Okay. And we've had some big ones, and uh, it depends on you know the, a lot of it depends on the weather and, and how things are going in, in the Gulf. So uh, okay, what we got here? We got a that's an amberjack and a big Wahoo. amberjack. Oh yeah. Yeah, you got categories for those, right? Well, not for the amberjack. Uh, that one was a, uh, you know, just a big fish they wanted to bring up and weigh it and see how, how much it weighed. Wow. It was a big one. But we have a Wahoo division, and we have a Spanish mackerel division, and we have a king mackerel division. It's primarily a king mackerel tournament. Right. That's where all the money to pay off is. It's $3,000 for first place, $2,000 for second, and $1,000 for third. Uh, in the professional division, we do a, uh, it's 50% of the total 50. entries. Mm -hmm. Right. In that in that division, so it's primarily a, a tournament uh, for for the amateur. Yeah, I mean, right. most of our people are amateurs. Oh yeah, they're, yeah. they're just good old guys that are out there trying to do the best they can. Well, you know? like most of us, we work Monday through Friday and want to fish on Saturday. Right, and right. So we, that's our that. weekend warriors. Exactly, and that's what we do. <laughs> All right, that's a nice Spanish right here. That, that what about four pound or something? Yeah, I believe that was about four and a half pounds. Wow. She's showing the black flag there. A lot of you know we have a lot of people bring in little kings and think it's a big Spanish. <laughs> 
and it's uh, it's not. If they look at that black flag, mm -hmm. flag up on the dorsal fin right there, that's a really good indicator of a Spanish mackerel. A lot of people don't know that. Good point. Good point right there. All right. That's the winners right there. Nice, some nice. Good fishing right there. All right, let me ask you this. What time is the weigh-in? What time are you going to do the weigh-in? Uh, the captain's party is on Friday, which is on August okay. 28th. And then the, the tournament is on Saturday, okay. which runs from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. And the weigh-in will be at the Mexico Beach Marina from 1 to 5. From 1 to 5. So and, and the tournament's over at 5. We blow that horn and we shoot that gun and it's over yeah. at, at 5 p.m. Now you do something unique too in your tournament. It really helps people out. Now they can, after the race, they can put in about anywhere? Or do they have to, or you got, what's your deal with that now? <coughs> well, they can put in at Panama City, they can put in at Mexico Beach, and That's they can put in at Port yeah. St. Joe in that area. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's for that area. It's yeah. a panhandle area. Basically from Indian Pass to St. Andrews Pass. Yeah, and which is very good. Uh, some of us put in over there to uh, Cape Sandblast at a state right. park. And, right. And because uh, if it had everybody put in at Mexico Beach, it'd be a line of folks. Going. We don't have enough room right, right. there for everybody. Right. Uh, and and you, can, you can bring your, your fish in by boat. Or you can bring it in by truck. Mm -hmm. You know, we have people that do it different ways. Mm -hmm. And but the fish must be weighed at the Mexico Beach Marina. Right, right. Uh, and it starts at 5 a.m. You cannot start fishing until 5 a.m. Yeah. in the morning. And uh, but uh, we'll have we have the boats range. You know, it depends on the weather. You know, we've had as many as 196 boats one year, and That's then it amazing. might get down to 30 or 40 or 50 to, if there's a hurricane floating around somewhere. Rough yeah. weather. People don't like rough weather. If we've got good weather, people are coming from everywhere and, and yeah. everywhere. Uh, but it's like any any tournament. Weather is a key factor. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know that recent one we had down at Sequoia, and that's something you can't control. You can't control the weather. Right. You just have to deal with it. And uh, and the hardcore fishermen, they're going to deal with it. Right. And, uh, and we were able to do that. We you know uh, at the biggest, but the biggest one brought in Caribbean was like 36 pounds, but because we didn't have enough fishermen right. that. that well, again, like I said, the weather is the big key. If we have really beautiful weather, one foot sea with a sunshine day, mm -hmm. we'll have 200 boats. Mm -hmm. uh, if we have a three to five foot sea and it's rough and it's windy and it's blowing, yeah, you know, we could get down to you know 50, 60, 80, 100. You never, mm -hmm. I, I never know. Well, I, I don't know how to predict it. And, and the key to this tournament and is, is there's so many local spots. Right. You ain't got to go 20, 30 miles offshore. There's so right. many, you know, y'all have done such a great job building reefs. And we're going to take a break and come back talking about this reef building. And, and uh, But this is where all, uh, these wrecks and, and all, and these buoy lines and, and the reefs, right. that's where they're going to be caught. Oh, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. our, our new super reefs are do, working well for the uh, Wahoos and the Kings yeah. and, uh, and Amberjack. Yeah. Okay, we'll take a quick break and come back and show you some more pictures of those. All right, I sit here with Ron Childs and Bob Cox from Mexico Beach. They drove over this morning to talk, talk about this big tournament they're having. This is really a big deal, and tell the folks how they can register. Go ahead, Bob. You, know, you can <laughs> register online at www.mbra.org. Uh, go to our tournaments tab. You can register online, pay with a credit card or PayPal account, mm -hmm. or you can even go to uh, Half Fish Tackle in Port St. Joe, Blue Water Outriggers, or the Mexico Beach Marina. And uh, if you can't do, uh, do any one of those uh, avenues, you can uh, come on down to the captain's party and register at the captain's party. And you were tell telling me some people even register uh, just to uh, be in the raffle and all. Or they don't necessarily well, go yeah, fishing. Well, we have some pe people have been uh, coming to the tournament for years for one reason or another. They don't want to fish the tournament or can't, mm -hmm. but they still come <clears> and pay their registration fee just to contribute to our artificial reef program. As a it's, all, it's our biggest fundraiser of the year. Now, that's great. So it goes to, to a really good cause. It helps a lot of people get out and uh, a lot of people fish those reefs and all. Well, uh, once I mean, add one thing to that. That's mm -hmm. one reason we get such good support is uh, we've built over 200 artificial reefs. Mm -hmm. And in fact, this year we passed the $2 million mark. We have over $2 million worth of artificial reefs. And, and believe it or not, this year is going to be even better. Uh, through a group of contracts and grants that we've written and things, we got a 1.4 million dollar grant about six weeks ago. So I mean, we're we're gonna we're building them as fast and as strong as we can, and everybody benefits. Well, everybody that, benefits. and that's saying that's a win-win for everybody. Right. Okay, I mean for, for y'all and to get a crowd of people down there, the divers love it, the fishermen love it, uh, and it's just a great thing. I, mean, I would say we probably got the best red snapper fishing. Uh, in the state of Florida and probably on the Gulf. I mean, we've got, our yeah. red snapper fishing is just unbelievable. I, yeah. it, you build the structure and build structure, they'll come. The, yeah. the, the fish will grow and, you know, we see little red snapper about that long all the time on our reef and yeah. we go and video them. And by the way, you can go to our website and there's 150 YouTube videos. You uh -huh. can click on the little icon on the home page. You can see them underwater. I mean, go look mm -hmm. at them. I mean, it's uh, it's amazing how many fish that are, are, are producing 
around those reefs. I know it. Well, here's one of them right here. Let's talk about this picture. This is a uh, this is a special picture. Yes, right here. Tell us about this picture. Yeah, okay, uh, that uh, is a picture of a 65 pound cobia caught by Benita Thompson. There, she's the one with the pink shorts there on the right, and uh, she uh, actually caught that fish on the third anniversary of her husband's memorial reef that we had placed and we were getting ready to put uh, some more reef material there mm -hmm. and we pulled up on the spot and she was out in the boat and we were wondering why she was a ways away. Well, she was fighting that fish. Oh, that, that's cool. <laughs> and that's where okay. we were adding uh, some more material to her husband's reef. Okay, so it's a big, you know, you gotta take a big boat out there and I gotta, we're gonna show you some pictures of construction of them and all and uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a big operation, isn't it? When you get it is. Um, we, we, but we do different kinds of reefs. One of the things we're looking at is, is we're trying to figure out through research what works. I mean, you can mm -hmm. build round reefs and square reefs and pyramid reefs, and you can put them down one or two at a time or three at a time or four at a time or six around each other, and you can mix them and match them. And so a part of what we do is we try to figure out what, what's best, what, mm -hmm. what works best, and how do we do it, and what attracts certain type fish. Amberjack like taller fish, taller structures, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, grouper like to get down under the bottom and get in a little hole somewhere. Well, speaking and, of uh, tall, now this, this one right here, I mean, that, that's big. Tell oh, yeah, that yeah, that one's the, uh, our latest uh, super <clears throat> reef that we've deployed 10 of those this year. That reef is 18 uh, feet tall and weighs 36,000 pounds. Wow, that, that is something now. So, uh, like I say, uh, it's neat that y'all doing experiments on them, so different sizes and different angles. Oh, yeah. of, of, different of, different shapes, <laughs> uh, different spaces. Uh, mm -hmm. We found what works best is having a reef that mimics uh, a natural reef. A natural reef is going to have uh, large spaces for a large fish mm -hmm. and small places for small fish. Big fish like to eat the small fish, so you got to take care of them too. You getting any uh, marine biologists coming up and studying any of this? or, you getting, or I know your divers go down a lot. Well, there are some. Uh, we uh, go to the uh, uh, Artificial Reef Summit every four years that the state holds, and we have biologists come there. Okay. And they're, they've done studies to find, find out how long does it take an artificial reef to mature, and it's approximately about two years. Okay. So it's going to reach maturity with all the marine growth on it, all the barnacles, all the way, uh, the, the small fish, the small shrimp, the crabs, the whole food chain. Okay. We have a research dive team, the NBARA. We actually, uh, um, as part of the grant, you have to maintain, monitor, manage, and evaluate. And so we're out there year round looking and videoing and checking and writing research reports on what we find there. And people look at a lot of that information. We have to send that to mm -hmm. FWC and we send that to the Army Corps. So Good. people are looking at that and yeah. we hope that we're able to, uh, to to come up with some new ideas that maybe can help in terms of how you, how you do that. Mm -hmm. uh, artificial reefs are very beneficial to everybody. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing how many fish it's drawing. Uh, Bob, I know you and your wife Carol, y'all do a lot of diving and all. Oh, you yes, down? yes. As a matter of fact, we were diving yesterday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what are, what are y'all seeing when you're going down in general? What are you seeing on just a good population of different species? Or? Oh, yes. Uh, probably the uh, the number one fish on our reefs are, you know, as far as the bait, it's the bait fish, is the tom take, but that's, we find that throughout the whole state of Florida. But uh, as far as game fish, our, our number one uh, population is going to be the red snapper. Yeah. We see the most of. And then, uh, you know, quite a few uh, gray snapper, lots of amberjack on these bigger reefs that we just recently built. And we do uh, see sharks. Uh, we see beautiful tropical fish. We mm -hmm. see all kinds of damselfish, butterfly fish. Uh, so if you're a uh, fishing enthusiast, there's something out there for you. But if you're just li like to view uh, wildlife, there, you can go down there and see some beautiful fish that you would have to normally go to the Caribbean to see. Okay, and well, I, we've got a couple of slides real quick. We can get in uh, just um, some of these. Uh, that's bait fish circling yeah. around, and yeah. that's what brings. Look at look at look the bait fish. Look at the bait fish. That's, that's one of those twenty-five foot <laughs> super reefs uh, with a, a bunch of cigar minnows around it. Speaking of tropical and all, I mean, you guys just have some great pictures. I'm gonna go through these fairly fast and all. I mean, look at just tell us if we go through them. That's an amberjack. No, that's, that's almost like a guy Harvey painting. Oh, yeah. And you know, I, I want to add to what Bob said, because I, mean, yeah. I dive with him a lot and he sees the mm -hmm. same thing. I see the red snapper are so plentiful right now. I, I don't know why there's this controversy about they are or they not. <laughs> they're, they're, I mean, the red snapper are going to be, be up in the docks. I mean, they're just <laughs> everywhere. The, you heard it, folks, right? Um, from, from the guys who go down and see them a lot. Um, and there's good research to support that too. Yeah. You know, Robert Chip uh, uh, talks mm -hmm. about that all the time in his books and his research that he's done. Mm -hmm. He said we have more red snapper now because of the artificial reefs and the the oil and, and the gas rigs that are out there. Yeah. Uh, the structure provides habitat, and habitat uh, allows some place for fish to grow and prosper. Uh -huh. And uh, the red snapper are just unbelievable, the numbers. Yep. It's just unbelievable. That's great. What do we have here, Bob? What That's a uh, yellow-tailed reef fish. It's a member of the damselfish family. Okay. 
Beautiful. Uh, some of y'all driving. Oh yeah. Now look at this picture here. That's what I was looking at last night. That is oh, yeah. beautiful. Red picture. snapper inside uh, one of our eight foot like, pyramids. Look at the growth on the on the reef. Now that's that's what it that, that's where it's got growth on it. That, the coral growth on there and mm -hmm. the, and the and the things that grow on these reefs are just unbelievable. Oh, you just framed that, up the picture. <laughs> those are the same organisms you'll find on a natural reef. Uh oh, what we got here? Yeah, There's a line. Of line fish. Fish. That's what we don't like to see. Oh, <laughs> so tell us about it real quick. What's going on up here with our line fish? Oh, uh, they're they're alive and well here. Uh, <laughs> there's been some mornings where uh, four of us have gone out there and killed about 400 li line fish off one reef. Goodness gracious. Uh, the good thing is, uh, a good part is they're very good eating. Yeah. If you eat them sashimi style, they taste like shrimp. Really? So they're, you know, if you like raw fish, they're very good. Frying them, uh, they're becoming popular in some of the local restaurants. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Okay, that's this is a great picture here. Yeah, that's a vermilion snapper or a mm -hmm. mingo mm -hmm. beeliner. Beeliner, we call them. Mm -hmm. Okay. All that's right. a uh, that's a uh, Thompson angel. Okay. That's a, a hybrid of a blue angel and a queen angel. Look oh. at the growth. You see the growth yeah. of, on, the, on the reef, though? Yep. It's amazing. Okay. and uh, That's one of the new super reefs. And see all the uh, uh, the mingo or the bee liners? Okay. There's Carol with a lionfish. All right. Okay. That's, that's some good pictures. Okay. Let's, uh, let's take our final break. We'll come back and have some giveaways for you. Be right back. Okay, hey, welcome back on our final segment of Panhandle Outdoors. Appreciate you watching the show. We're going to give away a cookbook in just a second. But first, let's look at our fishing game times. Brought to us by Mark Coward, Counts Real Estate. We're looking at two times this morning, uh, 445 to 645. Of course, that's this morning, this afternoon, 507 to 707. Okay, and we were talking too about the program y'all do. is just amazing at this. I mean, I'm looking through it. This is Y'all work on this all year, don't you? 84 pages long. 84. Yes, we, we do. We work on it all year long. That's our sponsors. People are in there. We have a lot of information in there. We've got pictures. We've got information on the reefs. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, Miss Kingfishers in there. It's a, it's a really an entertaining entertaining magazine for the tournament. We've also got information in there about our Memorial Reef pro program that's becoming very popular as well. Yeah, and, and tell us quickly about that. You can... Uh, oh, there's... Your, yeah, you can, we can be very creative. If you uh, want to name a reef after somebody, it doesn't have to be somebody that's deceased. Mm -hmm. It can be somebody that's living, or uh, we have corporate uh, reefs. Mm -hmm. But as far as the Memorial Reef Program, we've actually taken some reef structures, incorporated uh, cremated remains into the mortar of mm -hmm. the structure, and it becomes a living, uh, or you know, part of a cult, you know, our underwater ecosystem. Okay. Believe it or not, a lot of people are calling us and saying, "Listen, we'd rather do something with these ashes and build a reef as opposed to do something else." So this is an alternative that people are accepting, mm -hmm. and really, it's amazing how successful it is. What did we build? 15, 20 last year? Yeah, about 15, yeah, 15 to 20, yeah, 15 uh, memorial, to 20 memorial reefs. Memorial reefs. It's uh, kind of like a burial. Right. Uh, uh, instead of using your typical cemetery and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And uh, it's becoming more and more popular every year. It really is. And that's a lot of information in there. Okay. It's exactly. on our website, too, by the way. Okay. Really mm -hmm. good good stuff right there. And then your uh, you Miss Kingfish this year. Have we, have we done that yet? Or we have, every year we have a Miss Kingfish. Okay. Yes, we have a beautiful young lady coming in this year. Okay. And, uh, and Ron always keeps that a top secret. Okay. All right. uh, yeah, we, okay. All, we always do. And, uh, you brought us a cookbook. Yes, cookbook. that's our, our cookbook. We've sold about five or 6,000 copies of that. Yes. And it's uh, one of our most, we actually, we do a lot of things to raise money. We mm -hmm. sell t-shirts and we sell cookbooks and we have a Kingfish tournament and we write grants and contracts and we, we do all kinds of things like that. And this is one of our biggest fundraisers too. Uh, uh, we well, sell that. It's a great seafood cookbook. Local yes, recipes is. with local people. I just saw a good flounder recipe yeah. in there. Okay, flounder's coming up. Listen, this is, uh, we're going to give, he brought it up, we're going to give it one of our viewers. Okay, so I'm, Ron, I'm going to let you draw a name real quick and uh, one of our lucky viewers is going to get this cookbook. All right, just pull all one right. out of there. There you okay. go. Bob Billsma from Lynn Haven. Bob, I know he'll like that. Listen, uh, I, I know I know his wife uh, was going to really enjoy that. These are good outdoorsmen here. They'll, he'll like that. Uh, all right, congratulations, Bob. Lighting by LaVon. All right, so we got it. We'll put it right here and uh, I'm going to put the little card in it. Okay, real quick and summing things up. They can register all the way up till the tournament uh, uh, captain's meeting. Mm hmm and uh, they start fishing at five o'clock Saturday morning. It's a one day tournament. Yeah, I, I like that, one day tournament and they gotta weigh it in by five, five o'clock. And, and we're still on uh, central time. All tournament beach. times are central times. Yeah, if central. it's if involved in the tournament, it's a central time. Mm -hmm. we, 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 you know, we're down there on the line. 
Mm. You know, some no, people no. Are, are, are Eastern and some are Central, and there's a lot of confusion. No, central, Central, uh, yeah. Central. And uh, I get it because I go back and forth a lot, right. you know. I go, so I go into Eastern, and it's, <laughs> my, my clock's always going back and forth. Yeah. All right, now, if people just want to come watch the way in, they can come uh, in this, to the Mexico Beach Marina. Right. right. And because uh, I know a lot of times you just have people come watch your way in. Yes. Oh, we have five or six hundred people will be crowded in there. By the way, it's one hundred and seventy-five dollars a boat. Yes. And it's not per fisherman; it's per boat. So right. if you want to put two people on the boat, four people on the boat, or six people on the boat, that's your business. Yeah. We don't tell you that, but it's one hundred seventy-five dollars per boat uh, to enter the tournament. And uh, uh, the payouts: three thousand for first, two thousand second, one thousand for third, a thousand for Oahu, and five hundred for a Spanish. Is are the money? But I try to remind people: this is not about the money. This is a charity event. We're raising money to build reefs in the Gulf of Mexico. Exactly. So we could exactly. pay more. Some people say, why don't you pay $10,000? Well, we could do that, but the purpose of this whole tournament is to raise money to build reefs. And we've done an incredible job, over 200 reefs in the last 19 years. And this year, we're probably going to build who knows how many more with about $1.7 million that we have for this year. So yeah, we're going to build at least 60 reefs this year. Oh, that's, that's, that's cool. That, that is amazing. That's cool. And I, I know a lot of the boats are fishing because over the years, you know, you get to know those guys, uh, right. and you have some really good fishermen coming in. Oh, well, the recreational mm -hmm. guys, like those boys on the Blue Water Predator, I, mm -hmm. I enjoy, we enjoy the, at the captain's meeting, we just enjoy talking to those guys, and we just, it's a great camaraderie and all. So I'd, I'd encourage you to, to uh, you want to, I want to see you boys from Mariana come down too, uh, <laughs> uh, and we'll have a great time at a captain's meeting. That'll be, uh, and we're going, pretty sure we're going to enter this thing. Be a lot of good yeah. people coming yeah. down yeah. for the captain's party. It's a you, lot want to fun. you want to come down and watch the way in about from three to five o'clock. It's about the best time where you're going to see the most fish coming in. You good know, there's a rumor that old Scott Lindsay's going to fish in this thing. Scott, <laughs> <laughs> he just run his mouth. Uh, <laughs> Scott, something else, man. I did. I talked to him last night. He said he really wanted to enter. He, he, uh, he, it. Yeah. He, but uh, you know, I, I hope he can. You know, he's had. <laughs> a few health problems, but he's getting healthy now, and he's looking good. He's getting back yeah, on his feet. That was he's all an excuse. He's in fine. He's doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't listen to that. All right, we got to get it. Thank you all for coming. All right, over. man. Appreciate it. Thank all you right. very much. Thanks, Christian. All right, all right, all right. Okay, we'll see you folks. Thank you all for watching Panhandle Outdoors, and we appreciate your viewership. Do something good for your fellow man today. Have a great day, and God bless you. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle on Tours with Winston Chester. Panhandle on Tours features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle on Tours.